Hello, my beautiful friend. It's Betsy Gutting. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm really excited to speak with you about the new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. This is an evolutionary new moon, which means it's going to evolve us. We all seeded something new. We got a spark of, of a new possibility for our lives with the Aries full moon, October 9th. And now you may be having some fears come up, some unconscious programming surfacing around, can I do this? Do I want to do this? Well, do I feel safe and secure taking a new step, starting a new chapter? This is a big time of change. Eclipses always bring in change. They pick us up and move us to the right place, whether it's the location of our home, whether it's where we work, whether it's a business that we work in, a relationship that we're in, eclipses jumpstart new beginnings. Now this eclipse is happening October 25th, October 25th at 3.48 a.m. Pacific time, 6.48 a.m. Eastern time, and 10.48 a.m. Universal time. So you want to adjust the time for wherever you're living right now. And eclipses have a six month trajectory. So you could have been feeling this eclipse up to a month before it's happening on October 25th and up to six months afterward. Often we don't take action on an eclipse until several months afterward. That's when it comes to full fruition. But because we have a full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus conjunct Uranus, which I'll do a whole separate video on for you, two weeks after this eclipse, it's very possible because Uranus jump starts changes more quickly. It's very possible that many of us will be taking action and will be making what feels like a big step in a new direction. Now, I always like to give you an overview of the eclipse energy in Scorpio, which is a deep emotional water sign, often where a hidden truth becomes revealed. We are making choices and decisions to realign our lives, choices and decisions to realign our lives with our new post 2020 values, our new values. We're different from how we were. Our lives are different. The world is different from how things were pre-2020. We all know this. We know it viscerally. We know it in our in every aspect of our lives. So we are now creating a solid, sustainable foundation for our new life. We're going through a realignment phase and that can have growing pain. So in this video, I want to give you tips along the way for how to work with the energies. I want to share with you what to expect from this new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. I'm going to share with you two prior solar eclipses in Scorpio and you can look back and say what happened for me then. That will give you a clue perhaps as to what this eclipse is bringing for you. Who will be most affected by this eclipse? based on your natal astrology chart. And of course, as always, I'll be doing 12 sign readings. So be sure and listen to your sun, your moon, and your rising sign so you can get the full picture of what this eclipse has in store for you. If I were going to encapsulate this eclipse in one quote, I would choose the Joseph Campbell quote. You know, Joseph Campbell is known for his work on the hero's journey, and we are definitely on a hero's journey. We definitely are. That got jump-started with the Aries full moon. The Aries full moon was about the fool, us being the fool and stepping out doing something new. Yes, it was an ending, but it was also a new spark of inspiration that came in for all of us, hopefully for you as well, that said, leap and the net will appear. Have courage, go forward, be the pioneer in your life, take the road less traveled. That was the Aries full moon. It, it's, it was encouraging us to take a risk in a new direction. And now with the Scorpio new moon solar eclipse, we are getting the chance, the opportunity to deal with everything that is coming up around us taking that risk, taking that new chance. Everything that is bubbling up for us emotionally that may feel like a deep, dark fear or a wall or a block to what it is that we want to do going forward. So the quote, the quote from Joseph Campbell, we must be willing to let go of the life we planned so as to accept the life that is waiting for us. And I think of this as embracing the life that is waiting for us so as to 
be open to the life that is waiting for us. And I know that's not easy, my friend. I know it's not easy to let go of what you thought your life was gonna look like. So there may be a grief process for you and for many of us during this new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio, where we are releasing an idea of what we thought our life should look like, where we thought we should be in life by now, for example, how far along we thought we would be. Remember, we had 2020. <laughs> Remember, we had an earthquake go off in our lives with 2020 and all the fallout, and we're experiencing a lot of that fallout now, economically, financially, in a lot of different ways. In terms of security for a lot of us with friendships, with family, with, with other groups, all of that has shifted for many of us. And so many of you may feel like you're starting over. You are regrouping. You're, you are re truly creating a new life for yourself. So before I get more into the details of this eclipse, I want to say hello to you if you're new to me. I am Betsy Gutting. I'm an intuitive life coach as well as a psychic astrologer. And I love helping you to catalyze a vision for your life and bring it into reality. At the end of the video, I'm going to tell you all about my astrology consultations and the results you can expect from them, as well as a little bit about my soul alchemy coaching, my clarity coaching. Stay tuned for that, and I have a free gift for you. Your free gift I will tell you all about at the end of this video. Leave me a comment. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I absolutely love hearing from you, connecting with you. And if you would take one moment right now to click like on this video, to give it a thumbs up, to subscribe to my channel. I warmly invite you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next upload and you can continue to be a part of this evolving, like-minded, empowering community. So let's get more into this new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. First of all, who will be most affected? This new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio is happening at two degrees, two degrees of Scorpio. So if you have planets or points between, in your natal astrology chart, between zero and seven degrees, zero and seven degrees of Scorpio, or the other fixed signs of Aquarius, Leo, or Taurus, you will feel this new moon solar eclipse more personally. And for those of you also who have planets or points in your natal astrology chart, between 27 and 29 degrees of the cardinal signs, Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, or Libra, you will also feel this new moon solar eclipse more personally, more intensely. But we all have two degrees of Scorpio somewhere in our natal astrology chart. So we're all going to be feeling this new moon solar eclipse. Now, two degrees is significant because it is connected to intimacy, to partnership, to not doing it alone anymore, to working together. This is where we want to have deep, soulful connections with others. This is where we want to meet our like-minded tribe. There's a strong desire to work together toward a common goal. Now, it can also bring up codependency. That is also the number two. And it, codependency, intimacy, these issues are very much connected to Scorpio energy. So we're definitely going to be feeling this eclipse in the realm of our relationships. Now Scorpio is connected to the eighth house in astrology. The eighth house is passion, deep, intense, passionate feelings. It's our high highs and our low lows all the way from I'm down on my knees, I don't know what to do to I'm in ecstatic joy. Scorpio rules the full gamut of our emotional waters. Scorpio is also shared resources. It's where we share any resources in partnership with others. So this could be money. This is time. This is love. It's all of it. It's wherever we have. It's like where we join forces with another person, where we pool our money, where we pool our time and energy. It's also sexuality. It's taxes. It's debt, it's investments, it rules the banking system. So it's definitely a money house. And many of us are gonna be thinking about money and finances during this eclipse. Scorpio is co-ruled by Pluto and Mars. And many of you are familiar with Pluto energy. This is where we detoxify something. We detoxify a relationship or we cut ties to a relationship because we realize it's toxic for us. Or we cut ties to a job because it's no longer healthy for us. Or we let go of a pattern that we've had in relationships. Maybe we haven't spoken up for ourselves in the past. Maybe we haven't had our own backs. 
and we realize that's toxic to our own well-being, to our own self-love. So in this energy of this eclipse, we're going to be very aware of what we need to cut ties to and where we need to set clear boundaries, where we need to let other people know what our needs are, what we desire, what we are expecting. Pluto is also about power dynamics, power and control. This eclipse is empowering us to take back our power in any, whatever is up for you right now, whatever it is, you are most likely going to be really thinking about how can I feel empowered in the situation? How can I have my own back? How can I take care of myself so that I feel safe and secure? Because Scorpio energy is about safety and security emotionally, but also physically. It really runs the whole gamut of what each of us individually needs to feel safe and secure. In Scorpio energy, we have strong emotional attachments, emotional attachments to money, love, to possessions perhaps. It's kind of like where we're attached to something in our lives being a certain way. And we're going to be looking at what am I no longer attached to? What am I willing to cut ties to? What am I willing to close a door on and let go? And what am I not? What attachments are important for my well-being? What attachments are good for me? So the last time that we had a new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio, that is the last time we had a solar eclipse in Scorpio around the same degrees that we are having this solar eclipse in Scorpio was October 2014. So you may want to look back to October 2014 and think, what was I thinking about at that time? What was I doing? Think six months out from that time. So it could be anywhere from October into the spring or even possibly the summer of 2015. For me, I was contemplating a move to Laguna Beach, California, where I live now in October 2014. But it took me all the way until probably May of 2015 to make that decision. So it was beyond the six month trajectory. And I share this with you because sometimes we feel a sense of urgency and we feel like, oh my God, it's an eclipse. I have to take action now or a big tidal wave is going to come and get me. No, that is not true. It's important to listen to your own intuition and inner guidance as always, of course. But for me, there were other eclipses that happened the spring of 2015 that really kicked me into gear. I was having the hardest time making a decision about whether to move at the end of 2014. Around this, the time of the actual eclipse, October 2014, I was thinking about it, but because the eclipse was happening in my fifth house of children, creativity and romance, and my children lived in Seattle at the time where I lived, and I was very nervous and, and sad about leaving them, it took me a long time to make the decision to cut ties to Seattle and the Pacific Northwest and give myself permission to live in another place away from my children. That was so hard for me to do. This is Scorpio energy. We have strong emotional attachments to the way our life is in the present. It's, it brings in what, you know, what a good person would do. Um, it brings in our morality, our so much of how we see ourselves, our identity. It's not often not an easy decision to make. But finally, I got the blessing of my kids. And I want to say, like, sometimes we have to make decisions that people we love don't agree with. And that may come up for you during this eclipse where you say yes to something that other people are not in favor of. So I'm not sharing this example to advocate for you getting everyone's blessing before you make a decision. That was my situation. That's what I needed. And it was still a very hard decision. Now the second solar eclipse in Scorpio, again, around these same degrees, was October of 1995. So for those of you who were alive in October 1995, you can look back to that time and see what the theme was, what was going on in your life at that time. For me, I was leaving the practice of law. I was deciding not to practice law any longer. So that was a huge shift for me, a very big shift. So of course it's different for everyone. It depends on where this is happening in your chart, which we're gonna talk about when I get to the 12 sign readings. But this may help you to look back and say, what were the themes happening then? So now I want to talk with you about the aspects that are being made from other planets to the eclipse planets, the sun and the moon. And then we're going to get into the 12 sign reading. So the most important significant aspect 
for this eclipse is Venus conjunct the sun and the moon in Scorpio. Venus is literally at the same degree as the sun and the moon in Scorpio. Venus is love, beauty, pleasure, money, comforts. Think of Aphrodite. Think of everything that she wants, you know. I feel like the strongest message of Venus being conjunct these planets is what do you need personally? What do you desire personally that will help you to feel safe and secure as you are embarking on something new going forward? What do you need? We cannot, this is a big like no more self-abandonment, no more discounting our needs, no more undercutting ourselves or depriving ourselves. Do you feel worthy and deserving of your heart's desire? Remember, we've got the North Node in Taurus. The North Node in Taurus is wanting us to create a life upgrade. This should be a life upgrade for you, whatever it is you're going forward to do. And the life upgrade, we all have our own definition of what that is. So that's really personal to each person. But this has to be something where you see it's very easy in Scorpio energy to unconsciously slide back into our fears and to our old conditioning. And, you know, so many of us as highly sensitive people and empathic people and people on a spiritual path, we've had past lives and often a childhood that was very, very painful and difficult where, where our needs were not considered, where we didn't feel like we had the power to create what we needed to take care of ourselves. Think about the witch burning dimes. Think about, I know that's a, that's a dramatic example, but so many of us have kind of dimmed our light in order to stay safe, what we thought we needed to do to, to stay safe. This can bring up the things that we did as children in order to cope and keep ourselves safe. And at the time, those were things that those coping mechanisms were things we had to do to ensure our survival, but now we're going beyond survival into thriving. So this is where we have the chance to observe ourselves and notice how are we going about this co-creation of what it is that we want, our heart's desire right now. How are you going about that co-creation? What fears are coming up for you? Are you allowing that? Are you observing that old conditioning and allowing it to fall away? Because that's not who you are anymore. You are no longer limited by the fears that other people are controlling your life, for example, or that you're not safe in the presence of other people, or that it's not safe to go beyond your comfort zone and step out and to pioneer something new. That's the old. That's what's going away. That's what's burning up with this solar eclipse. So Venus conjunct the sun and the moon during this eclipse may bring up for you a power dynamic. And I think of when I think of power dynamics, I think of my parents' relationship. And all of us had a relationship that we kind of looked to in our, that conditioned us somehow, right? That conditioned our own beliefs around power. And with my parents, there was a lot of arguing and dissension around money. My father was the breadwinner. He brought home the money. They were in a very traditional relationship. My mother was the, the full-time caregiver, the full-time homemaker. And they often disagreed on money and how to spend it. And so when my mom would, you know, for example, buy a school clothes, new school clothes or school shoes, she would say, don't tell your father that I bought you new shoes. Just like enjoy your shoes, but don't let your father know. And so, of course, that gave us a sense of, okay, we have to hide the good things that are happening in our lives. Whenever money is spent, we have to hide it from our dad because he can't know that we got something good. And what I saw with that with my mom and my dad, too, was my mom just never felt empowered to speak up for herself around the things that she wanted. She didn't have power in their relationship around decision making and money. And so there was often the sense of, I can't, she couldn't have what she wanted, or we couldn't have really what we wanted. Or even if we got what we wanted, we had to be hush-hush about it. We couldn't celebrate it. We couldn't talk about it. So what I've noticed in my own life is that I've had a tendency to undercut my own 
self-nourishment around spending money on myself and I tend to go very bare bones with some things and I tend to think okay I, I really like that but I don't really need that so I'm not going to get that for myself or you know I can do without this or do without that and that's all just coming from my conditioning so now during this new moon solar eclipse I am very aware with the next thing that I'm thinking about doing, the next big step that I'm thinking of taking, which is very big for me, it would be a big change for my life, I have to be very sure that I'm not undercutting myself, that I am very conscious of my needs and making sure they're met. This is how our inner child feels safe and secure. Venus conjunct this, the sun and the moon is saying, take care of your inner child, nourish him or her, let him or her know that they are safe, that you have their back, that you're taking care of all their needs, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. See, this new moon in Scorpio really wants us to claim our self-reliance, claim our ability to take care of ourselves. That means advocating for ourselves. That means making sure our communication is really clear where others are involved, where others are helping us with someone, with something or supporting us in making something happen around what we're creating. This is where it's really important that we are super clear and we're not afraid to speak up for ourselves and we're not afraid to double check that we're on the same page and that it things feel fair to us. It feels like we are asking for what we need. This eclipse is in Scorpio and so is the south node in Scorpio. That means we are letting go of old karma with this eclipse. Even though it's a new moon eclipse and we're seeding new intentions for our heart's desires, we're also releasing old karma. So as we are going forward to create what it is we want to create, we also are very aware of patterns that we've had that haven't been self-loving. So no more self-abandonment, no more sweeping things under the rug, no more expecting someone to do something for us that we know in our heart of hearts, that we know in our gut may not happen. And so that makes us feel very wobbly and insecure Anything that makes us feel insecure, we are being called to address during this eclipse. I really feel this is like we are releasing an old self. We are having an ego death. <laughs> we really are. This is, you know, Scorpio's death and rebirth. We are releasing an old ego that didn't feel secure taking care of ourselves in, the, in, in our old world, our old lives. We are releasing that. We are standing up. We are saying, I can take care of myself. I can be self-reliant. And that doesn't mean that we don't have tribe that supports us. That doesn't mean we don't have support. That doesn't mean we don't, you know, bring people around us that, that have our back. We do. But we are the ones choosing those people. We are the ones choosing our relationships. We're choosing the new home that we want to live in. We're choosing the job or the, the business that we have. We're making the choices and we're trusting ourselves. We're increasing our sense of self-trust as we let go of these old behaviors that we've had that made us feel uncertain, that made us feel insecure. Pluto in Capricorn is now direct. Pluto has gone direct in Capricorn and it's making an out of sign square to the sun, moon, and Venus. What does this mean, an out of sign square? Basically, what it means is Pluto and Capricorn is going to bring something to light, something that's been hidden, a new truth that is going to be empowering to all of us. So be aware of anything that comes to your attention that you were not aware of before. Pluto is showing us what is toxic, what we have to cut ties to. Pluto wants us to fiercely defend our territory, whatever that means for you. Fiercely defend what is absolutely essential to your well-being. Set clear boundaries and cut ties to anything that does not is not in alignment with that. Now, I would be remiss to not at least mention that we are, during the solar eclipse, having the fourth Saturn-Uranus square. I have a whole separate video on the Saturn-Uranus square, but what I want to say right now is that this can feel like tension between our desire to liberate our lives, to free ourselves, to do something new, to invent, reinvent ourselves, reinvent our lives versus where we feel controlled, where we feel restricted, where things feel tight, where we're afraid to make a change, afraid to make a move. 
where the status quo just feels like it might be easier. And yes, the status quo is easier. It's, it's easier, but Uranus is saying no, like you can't stay where you are. You can't stay where you are in at least one area of life for most of us. We have to make an innovative change. So what this can look like in the light is a workaround, is an innovative reinvention kind of workaround that allows you to make a positive, illuminating change while also really looking at the reality of your life, the reality of your finances, the reality of your physical life. This is Saturn in Aquarius. What's the reality of my life? Where am I limited? Work within your limitations. Do create something that may feel risky and scary, but is for your greatest good within the limitations that you see right now. We are creating a solid, sustainable foundation. We are making a post 2020 course correction. For example, if you have you know, your whole nest egg is in the stock market and, and now it's worth 30% less or whatever, different for everyone. Now you might be making different choices than you would have made, you know, in 2019. And that's okay. We are readjusting, we're course correcting, but our creativity, our connection to the divine, our ability to download new possibilities is, has no limits. That has no limits. We are unlimited creative beings. You can create things that you wouldn't have created before when maybe you had more of a secure um, backing financially. Now you're kind of forced to go out of your comfort zone and, and call on your inner resources, on your cosmic resources in a deeper way that is going to allow you to realize a whole new sense of yourself. Now you may have a part of you that is like, yes, yes, t I'm taking a risk. I'm, I'm going for this new thing. I'm going to do the Jupiter and Aries leap in the net will appear. I'm going to gather my courage and confidence. I'm going to st step off the cliff. Even if I don't know there's a net below me, there's a part of all of us that is wanting to encourage us to take a risk. But at the same time, there's a part of us that is saying, I don't know, that feels really scary and I want, I want safety and security. And so you could feel like you're holding on to the side of the cliff for dear life with your, with your fingers dug in. You could feel like you're digging into your current life to your emotional attachments and you're having, and someone is like, your, your guardian angel is pulling your foot the other direction going, come on, come on, let go, let go of the side of the cliff. You can do this, you can do this. And you're like, no, no, that very well could be coming up for you. Mars is in Gemini right now. Mars is in Gemini. In Gemini, Mars wants to go. Mars wants to take risks. Mars wants to try new things. Mars is very exploratory in Gemini. However, Mars will be going retrograde in Gemini, retracing its step, rethinking, reassessing its plans. And right now, Mars is squaring Neptune. So you could feel kind of a fuzziness and uncertainty of like, how is this all gonna come together? How can I make this happen? I feel insecure because I don't see the end trajectory. I, it feels too fuzzy. It feels too insecure. With Mars retrograding in Gemini, we won't have the culmination to this Mars-Neptune square until mid-March of 2023. So this is asking us to have faith, <laughs> have faith. Get the information you need. Ask the questions you need. Don't let the other person or other people off the hook or be like very amorphous with you about the details. You need the details. You need the information. But have faith in yourself that you can course correct if you need to. If the desire within you is strong enough to take this next step, to do something new and different in whatever area of life this is happening for you, you're being encouraged to have faith in yourself, to believe in yourself, to remember you are a new person now. You are a new person. You've grown, you've evolved, and you have what it takes to be successful. It's also really helpful with Mars and Gemini to have options, to have kind of alternative plans. Well, if this doesn't come through, then I could do this. If that doesn't work, then I could do that. 
That is just one way that we can make ourselves feel more safe and secure. And what if this eclipse could be bringing you a gift, a new possibility that's way better than you're even imagining it to be? This is something that's really important to open up to. A beautiful lady brought that up in my workshop last Sunday on the Aries full moon that, you know, sometimes the fear is just taking up too much of our airspace and we're not seeing the possibility. So in Scorpio energy, our fears will come up. We are releasing fears. This is a shadow work Scorpio new moon solar eclipse if I ever saw one. This is a time to look at our fears, to feel our fears, to to let our fears move through us and to clear the slate so that we can see with clear eyes the potential that is in front of us. Okay, so let's do the 12 sign readings. As always, I will be pulling a card for each of you for your sun, moon, and rising. I'm using the beautiful Kyle Gray Angels and Ancestors cards. I absolutely love these cards and I will share with you what I got when I tuned into each of you and where this is happening in your astrology chart. Beginning with Scorpio. Hello, beautiful Scorpio, and happy birthday to those of you who are going to be having birthdays, those of you with very early degree Scorpio suns. This new moon, solar eclipse in Scorpio, of course, is your new moon eclipse. This is big. I would be surprised if those of you who are Scorpio risings especially are not having a big shift in life as a result of this eclipse. It's happening in your first house. Now, the first house is the house of self. So there are so many different changes in various areas of your life that could be happening for you during this eclipse. This is the time to seed intentions for anything that you want in your life. This is a beautiful time of rebirth, of new beginnings for all Scorpios and Scorpio risings. The first house is the house of identity. It is your appearance, it's your look, it's your vitality, it's your physical sense of just health and wellness and vitality. And this eclipse is asking you, beautiful Scorpio, to ask yourself, what do I want my life to look like going forward? What do I, this is a brand new chapter for you. What do you want your life to look like going forward? When I tuned into your energy, I got the sense of you are really feeling the immediacy of this eclipse. You are really feeling this energy. And when I tune into spirit, spirit said there's a call to action. You're feeling the call to action. You're feeling like you must take action around the time of this eclipse toward what it is that your heart most wants. There's a courage to face your fears that you are being called to muster, a new sense of courage, a new sense of confidence. And you also might be feeling a pressure, a pressure to take action, a pressure to make movement. I know that Scorpios, and I've said this in my last several videos, you have not had an easy time. I know you haven't. You've had Uranus in Taurus, you know, making difficult aspects to your planets. Um, and it hasn't been easy. And Saturn and Aquarius squaring your sign. So you, it hasn't been an easy time for you, Scorpios. But... I think you're really going to be feeling like it is time to take action. And hopefully you're feeling a rebirth. Hopefully you're feeling a, a newness. Of, first house is I'm coming out. I'm stepping out. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. I got to let it show. That is your energy. That is it for you, Scorpio. So it really is like a time to give yourself permission to be you fully, completely. Let your freak flag fly. Like, Take off the old cloak of fears and, and insecurities and let yourself be you. And let's see what the cards have to say. I'm shuffling the cards as I'm talking. So your card is, your card is drum. Okay, I need my glasses to look at the message. This is really cool. This card, the message on this card is it's time for you to dream and journey. So you see this drum. It's like a Native American medicine wheel, I believe. I could be wrong about that, but I really feel that. Um, and what this is saying is it's time to go deep inside and get a vision for your life. Feel, you know, the drum is like 
it, it mimics our heartbeat, right? And it mimics our own rhythm. Scorpio, you are being called to give yourself permission to live by your own inner rhythm. No more living in accordance with somebody else's expectations or your conditioning or anything that anyone taught you that is not in alignment with who you see and feel yourself to be now. It's time to go deep, deep, deep into the recesses of your own subconscious mind and to pull down a vision from your spirit uh, that that is informing you of and i just feel this very important this is so scorpionic i just feel like this deep deep need for you to connect to your most primal self your highest self your truth and I just see these like Native Americans like dancing around a fire and drumming like that deep, deep, um, just a very deep connection with yourself. And that can come through listening to drumming mu music. It can come through guided visualization. I can certainly facilitate this for you during a clarity session as well, take you deep into a guided visualization where you can get a vision for yourself, whether you do it with me or someone else or on your own. There are a lot of YouTube videos that can assist you in terms of meditations and visualizations as well. This, These are your marching orders, Scorpio. It's time to go deep and get a vision that's going to catalyze your next steps going forward. So happy new moon solar eclipse, Scorpio. Okay, Sagittarius, hello, beautiful Sagittarius. Sag, this new moon, solar eclipse in Scorpio is happening in your 12th house, your 12th house of retreat, of the subconscious mind, of your connection to the divine, of your mystical self. This is a time that you may really be needing rest, rejuvenation, reflection. And when I tuned into your energy, I got the sense of some of you, not all of you, but some of you kind of shrinking back. I didn't feel your full energy. I felt, hmm, sometimes in the 12th house, we want to escape. We want to do anything. It's different for everyone, uh, what we do to escape. But, you know, it can be Netflix. It can be an extra glass of wine. It can be a lot of things, right? But I got the sense that some of you, Sages, just want to escape. What you're really being called to do is to reflect on your fear. Spirit's message for you is that there will be an ease in releasing an old self, an old outworn energy that you don't need anymore. Releasing your fears. It's going to be easier than you think, Sag. I feel like some of you are like, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to feel right now. I just want to, you know, I'm tired or I just want to distract myself. And that's very natural and understandable, especially if you're afraid you're going to get swallowed up by the emotions and Scorpio waters do run deep. But um, Spirit is saying, encouraging you to let everything that is not you burn away with your Sag fire energy. Let it burn away. Don't run from the darkness. There is a light in your shadow too. Our shadows are not just our dark spots they're not just the parts of us that we've disowned or pushed down or pushed away they're also our light our authenticity our exuberance our creativity there's so much light that often we have also pushed away in our shadow that can be such a gift to you and also just the lightning of energy that happens when you do embrace a part of you that has been kept in the closet <laughs> Okay, so Sag, let's pull a card for you and see what the cards have to say for you. And this one fell out. So this is beautiful. This is spring. See your seeds grow. So look how sweet this is. I feel like this is the sweetness of this rabbit taking a leap in the garden and when I look at this, this sweet little animal, it feels so tender and delicate and quote unquote innocent, meaning it's free of fear. It's free of fear. It's just enjoying its own aliveness. And spring is a time of rebirth. Spring is a time of life bursting forward, Sag. So how beautiful is this? Even though this eclipse is happening in your 12th house, which is often where we pull in, this is saying 
you know, any reflection that you do, any releasing, um, any downtime that you have, the result, the gift is going to be springtime and you seeing your seeds growing, you seeing your seeds flowering into beautiful plants. So this is a beautiful, beautiful yes to you and um, encouragement to you to let it happen. So happy new moon solar eclipse, Sag. Okay, Capricorn. Hello, beautiful Capricorn. This eclipse, solar eclipse in Scorpio is happening in your 11th house. Now the 11th house is a very public house. It's our house of friendships, communities, groups, associations. This is where we're out about in the world. It's networking, it's our social media. It is really where we are interacting with the public and interacting with people that, you know, really matter to us too. But also often it's just like large groups and acquaintances and um, parties and things like that. So your message from Spirit, Capricorn, is that you are, some of you, you're ending a group association. Some of you are letting go of a friendship. You are letting go of some involvement that you've had in some in a particular community or organization or cause. And you are embracing something new for yourself something for yourself. You may be having changes in friendships and relationships right now that may cause a grief process for you. Let it happen. I know that's easier said than done, but um, you've changed, you've grown, and there's a new passion, a new goal, a new trajectory, a new spark of, an, of aliveness that's, that's come through for you, and you probably know what I'm talking about, that is taking your focus now, and it's okay. I know that Capricorns have such a strong sense of responsibility to other people and commitments and where they've given where you've given your energy before and where you've made friends and where you've had alignments and you know tribe and you don't want to disappoint anyone or let anyone down but it's very important that you align and let yourself align with what is calling to your heart right now what has passion for you by doing that you help everyone you help the world and the 11th house is the world card and you give your beautiful passionate energy to the world and up loves up levels the vibration for everyone so let's see what the cards have to say for you capricorns and you just might have a beautiful new friendship come in or a beautiful new love relationship because a Across from the 11th house is the 5th house, which is true love and romance. So maybe there'll be something really beautiful that comes through for you. Okay, enough shuffling. Capricorns. Capricorn, your card is Direction Guardian. It says, choose your path. Check this out. Choose your path. So this card symbolizes that you have more than one direction to choose from. And I love the different animals in this card. And I love that there's an angel here and there's this fierce lion. And it looks like this is like a cow. I think that's a cow and then maybe an eagle. The lion represents your courage. The cow represents abundance. The milk, the bounty will always be flowing for you. And the eagle is your wisdom. And the angel means that you are protected and you have different paths you can take. And this is a guardian angel for you that's saying, I have your back. I am protecting you. You are not doing this alone. You, I, I will help you choose a direction. Work with me and I will help you but you ultimately have to choose your path. You have to make a decision. And it's time, it's interesting Capricorn, because one of the messages that I didn't say to you yet from Spirit was, look at your reality um, rather than hiding from it. Look at it and face the facts of it. Now that's gonna mean something different to all of you, but what does that mean for you? What is, what, what, maybe there's some cold hard fact that you don't wanna look at. <laughs> But this is saying in order to choose the right direction, you really have to look at what is your current reality and what's old, what's died for you, what no longer has energy for you. What has energy for you? What new path do you want to take? Happy new moon solar eclipse, Capricorn.
Okay, Aquarius. Hello, beautiful Aquarius. Aquarius, this new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio is happening in your 10th house of career, of life purpose, retirement for some of you, how you want to spend your time that brings you meaning and fulfillment. Your message from spirit is you may feel the urgency to close a door in your career. There's an ending that's associated with this south node eclipse. However, it's very important that you're honest with yourself right now about what is dead for you. So that's not really a however, it's an and. What has died for you? What no longer has energy for you? What do you have to release? That's very difficult sometimes for Aquarians because you are humanitarian. You want to be there for other people. You are a leader. You have done a lot for other people, especially in groups and communities. And it might be hard for you to cut a tie that you actually actually have to cut in order to move forward. So there's an acceptance here. There's an acceptance here that something is over and an embracing of your a new self in you that is almost giddy, giddy about doing something new. What are you giddy about, Aquarius? What makes lights you up? What would you let yourself do if you were gonna give yourself permission to not worry about other people and what they're gonna think and how your actions are going to affect their lives. I'm not saying to do anything that is really detrimental. Obviously, like if you're a parent to young children, you're gonna do things that are in your children's best interest, that kind of thing. But where you have friends or family that just peripherally would rather have you stay in, in the status quo, that's a whole different story, right? So um, the other message from Spirit is that it's okay to move on. And which part of you do you identify with now? Who are you now ready to, which part of you are you ready to identify with? Are you ready to identify with your wild woman self or your, um, what's the equivalent of a wild woman for a guy? <laughs> I don't want to be sexist, but like if you're if you're a male Aquarian, like maybe it's your, I don't know, bohemian, you know, male self. I, I, I'm a little stuck on that, but you know what I mean? Like we all have all different sides of ourselves. We have our professional side. We have our, the side of us that's very conventional. We have the, 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 maybe the absent-minded professor side, the super creative, the witchy side, the the magician side, like the alchemist, who are you identifying with? Because that is the self that is calling you forward. And if you're identifying with an old self that has died, that has no more energy for you, Aquarius, you are not going to be happy. So I was shuffling the cards and one fell out and I'm going to show it to you. And it is the high priestess and it's harness your mystic power, harness your mystic power. So check out this card. She, and this is, we all have a high priestess within us, whether we're male or female. She is fierce. Look at her fierceness. She has a very one-pointed focus. She has a beautiful black cat that is by her side, probably channeling insights and energy for her. And she is clearly in her power. And this is harness your power. You can't harness your power when your energy is being leaked out to a lot of different places, especially places where you're not getting back what you're giving, where you're maybe just doing something out of obligation or habit or so that people like you. And it's time to let that go, Aquarius, because it's time to move forward on your new trajectory, harnessing your power. Happy new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. Okay, Pisces. Hello, beautiful Pisces. This new moon solar eclipse is happening for you in your ninth house, your ninth house of adventure, spirituality, spiritual beliefs. It's your new horizons. It is higher learning. This can be getting a PhD or going for some new, you know, like certification in astrology or simply just, you know, doing your own self-study in a particular area. Um, but this is about you really throwing off the shackles of your life and giving yourself permission to have a new adventure, a new adventure. When I tuned into your energy, I got a sense of excitement and a new beginning. I felt that from a lot of you, like you are feeling the excitement. You are, I definitely got the, I'm saying yes, I'm saying yes energy. 
Some of you may do some overseas travel. Some of you may meet someone who's international, someone who comes from a different country than you do. You could be moving to a new state. This rules long distance travel. Your message from spirit is let your desire take you to new surroundings. New surroundings will uplift you. New surroundings will give you a new vantage point, a new vista, a new perception of life a renewing perception of life. It's time for you to feel renewed, beautiful Pisces, and to see yourself in a whole new light. This is an enlightenment kind of um, eclipse for you. This is very expansive. Message from Spirit, follow your heart. That simple, follow your heart. Now let's see what the cards have to say for you. Pisces. Okay, your card is take care of your needs. Pisces, this is so important for you because it's so easy for you to just fill up the cup of other people, right? To just, just to not even know what your own needs are sometimes. Are these, is this my need or is this someone else's need? So check out this card. This is the wolf, which is a wise teacher and it's the card of winter. And it says, take care of your own needs. So Pisces, I feel like for some of you, there are needs you put on the back burner that you, things that you have to do to sort of clean things up in your life to move forward. Um, I feel like it's time to acknowledge the fierce inner teacher within you, time to acknowledge that you are a guide for others, whether it's a formal guide or, or informally, what you do in your life, to acknowledge your energy, to acknowledge that many of you are spiritual teachers, you do, um, alchemy work, you do spiritual work, you do energetic work, you help a lot of people, you give your love and unconditional love to a lot of people. And most importantly, to factor yourself in and take care of what needs taken care of and to make sure you don't negotiate away your own needs, you don't undercut yourself. Like the little story I shared about um, my kind of my growing up years and my parents, how easy it is when we have role models that aren't empowered and don't take care of themselves how easy it is, is for us to take on that kind of a habit and that's not true for all of you but for those of you who resonated with that it is time now for you to put yourself first and your needs first happy solar eclipse in scorpio beautiful pisces okay aries hello aries aries this New moon solar eclipse is happening in your eighth house of transformation. This is like double amplified energy for you around transformation, death and rebirth Aries, because this is a Scorpio eclipse, which is already associated with the eighth house. And now it's happening in your eighth house. Wow. This is, you are not going to come out of this without some sort of transformation. This is also investments and debts and taxes and inheritances and you know, long-term gains. This is definitely a money house and it's also our sexuality. So it's really like our most primal needs when you think of like death, sex, money, <laughs> all the things that, a lot of things we don't necessarily talk about in public. These are things that like, we really need to feel safe and secure. And so this, there's a sense of safety and security that is that is with you during this eclipse. That is something you're trying to gain in your life. Your message from spirit is it's time to face your shadow, your fears, and your light. Face your shadow, your fears, and your light because you have light that you may have also denied, that you may not have yet discovered about you, your diamond self, your beautiful, mystical, sparkly diamond self, your enlightened self. That is also on offer for your discovery during this new moon eclipse, solar eclipse in Scorpio. Accept and embrace it all. Accept all the parts of you that you have not fully celebrated and accepted. There's wholeness that is on offer for you as a gift and a rebirth that is here for you as a gift during this eclipse. Aries, and I'm going to pull a card for you right now. I'm shuffling the cards and I'm going to pull a card for you. And I know some of you might be saying, this is really hard. I'm feeling down. I'm feeling hopeless. That's what happens when we get sucked into our deep, dark fears. That's a natural part of the process. It's natural for some of you to feel like I'm on my knees. I don't know what's next. I'm terrified. That's your conditioned self. That's not your true self, Aries. I'm just reminding those of you that need that reminder. That isn't your true self. But 
as a result of this eclipse and doing the work on your shadow self, and you can certainly call on me as support if you need it to do that, um, as a result of doing that inner work, then you awaken to your the next version of your brightest, truest self. So the card for you, Aries, is... Oh, I love this card so much. Mother Earth, feel loved and comforted. This is so important for you to remember. Mother Earth loves and comforts you. Look, she's pregnant. You are pregnant with something new, beautiful Aries. There is something, male or female, something for all Aries that want, that is being birthed forward, a new self. And see how beautifully nourished she is by the bounty of mother earth that nourishment is for you too and i want you to know that i have several meditations on my youtube channel that will reconnect you to the earth will reconnect you to your spirit and to connect you to your spirit guide so you can feel that nourishment you can remember that the earth supports you as well as spirit supporting you and as you connect to mother earth you will feel that love and comfort and it will be easier to come back to your true self, beautiful Aries. So happy new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. Okay, Taurus. Hello, beautiful Taurus. This new moon solar eclipse is happening in your seventh house, your seventh house of partnerships, of committed relationships, of clients, of people whose back you have and people who have your back. These are our most important relationships. And so for many of you, there's a shift in your relationships going on. There may be a letting go. There may be where you just don't feel like the energy, the give and take, the flow is equal, is satisfying anymore, is fulfilling, and you're letting something go or you're letting go of one of your relationship patterns that, you, that becomes um, illuminated for you during this eclipse where you see, oh, okay, that's a pattern that I've done. I'm not going to do that anymore. And then you feel a sense of rebirth and um, your new self coming forward, more empowered self. Spirit said it's time for you Taurians to feel supported and it's important for you to get support. Um, there are radical changes for some of you in terms of an ending that I mentioned before. It's time for you to, to, to know your birthright of having a mutually reciprocal relationships, Taurus, to not always be the one to do the work and to give and not receive what you deserve. Mutually reciprocal relationships for you are gonna create a solid sustainable foundation that you need to thrive in every area of your life, Taurus. So this is what you are after now. This is what you are seeding in terms of intentions. This is where you are clearing the slate. You're cutting ties to anything that doesn't match that. And you're saying yes to yourself, knowing you deserve this. So let's see what the cards have to say, Taurus, for you. Taurus. Taurus, your card is Protection Guardian. The Protection Guardian. Drop your shield. I love this. This is so perfect for committed partnerships. First of all, she's absolutely gorgeous. She's multicolored. She's super creative. She has, she in her energy alone is protective. And she is coming to you as a guardian saying, you don't have to have a shield up anymore to your heart, Taurus. You don't need to shield your heart anymore. There is a conditioned pattern for some of you that is for some of all of us that where we have shielded our hearts because we have, because of past wounding, right? Where we haven't gotten our needs met, where we've been hurt by others. And think of the Three of Swords card, <laughs> where we have been let down, where we have, you know, experienced deep pain in relationships. You have healed from that, Taurus. You have healed. You have done the inner work. You now can trust yourself to choose your relationships wisely, to know when people are right for you and wrong for you, to know when they are a match for you or not. And it's safe for you to let down your guard, to let down your shield, knowing that this protection guardian and your higher self and spirit are giving you all of the knowledge and the intuition and the guidance you need to make the right choices in your relationships. You can Release the shield over your heart and embrace the goodness of love. You deserve all the love, all the joy that you can stand, beautiful Taurus. 
Okay, Geminis. Hello, beautiful Gemini family. My sun is in Gemini. This eclipse, solar eclipse in Scorpio, is in your sixth house. It's happening in your sixth house of health, of exercise and diet, your daily routines, your work, what you do daily. And when I tuned into your energy, I got a sense for some of you, many of you, that there's a fire of desire burning within you. Geminis, you love variety. You love doing new things. You love adventure. And I really feel like you are being called forth to a new adventure that may feel scary. It may feel like out of this world. I can't believe I'm thinking about doing this. You want to get things rolling. Like you're ready to get it going. You feel like if you wait, then maybe you will lose your steam or your momentum. Mars is in your sign right now. Mars is in Gemini. And that is getting you activated big time. Mars is desire. It's activated your desire. Now, at the same time, though, Mars is going retrograde in Gemini October 30th, and it will be retrograde October 30th to mid-January. So you could be feeling kind of a like on the fence energy. Like I feel this burning desire. I want to do this. I want to go for this. And yet I'm waffling. Like there's a part of me that feels scared. There's a part of me that doesn't doesn't know if this is right for me. So you may be doing some reassessing over the next, you know, month or two or three even about what's right for me. What steps should I take? Should I go for it? Um, my advice to you is to take baby steps. My advice to you is to research your plans and to go forward to follow your desire, follow the thread, as we say, the thread of inspiration and excitement, knowing that it's leading you somewhere. It's going to keep your energy high, but keep your options open or make a commitment if you feel like it's time to make a commitment and do it. You know, everyone's different. You have to trust your spirit and trust yourself and trust your decisions. Um, Spirit's message to you is it's 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 helpful for you to step back and reconnect to your heart's true desire. Step back and reconnect to your desire, to the big picture and what your inner child needs. What does your inner child need to feel safe, Gemini, as you take steps forward toward your trajectory, toward your dream? What would make you feel safer and more secure? Spirit says there is nothing more important than your well-being, and that we know that's true. Put that first. Put your well-being above any, any goal that you have, any vision that you have, any real-world thing that you're going for. Put your well-being above that because it's not all about the end result, even though our egos think it's all about the destination. The truth is that if you commit to your own well-being to have your inner child's back throughout whatever you're doing, then you will be safe and secure regardless of the end result, regardless of what happens. Because there is some uncertainty right now with Mars squaring Neptune, and we're all feeling that, especially Geminis. There's some uncertainty there, some fuzziness, some confusion. And by committing to, to have your back through, through the whole thing and not to, to call it a mistake, if something doesn't work the way you think it's gonna work or doesn't end up looking the way you thought it was gonna look, that's not a mistake. You followed your spirit, that is the win, following your heart, following your spirit, having your back the whole way through, taking care of your well-being the whole way through. That is the success. Put your well-being in first and everything else will fall into place. And now I'm gonna pull a card for you, Geminis. Beautiful Geminis, what do the cards have to say for you? on this new moon solar eclipse in Scorpio. Your card is Shapeshifter. Oh my God, how perfect for Gemini's. Shapeshifter. Okay, I have to put my glasses on to see the little tiny message here and then I'll show you the card. Transform and unveil your gifts. Check out this card. Transform and unveil your gifts. So this is going to be a transformational new moon eclipse for you. Scorpio is already transformational. There's a full moon there, so there's more transformation to come with the full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus, November 8th. You are a shapeshifter, Gemini. You're the alchemist. You are the magician in the tarot. Let yourself shapeshift. Maybe even be the eagle and fly above your life. Fly above the 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 vision the scenario of what you see yourself creating and see what it looks like from the eagle's perspective. Look at it from the wolf's perspective. Look at it from 
your higher self's perspective and see what you see. Maybe there's new information there for you, Gemini. Allow yourself to shape shift, go within, do some journeying, do some visualizing, let yourself, and if you need help doing a journey like this, this is something I can definitely guide you on, just so you know. Um, my website is on my channel in the description box below, but if you need help, I can help you with that. And many of you Geminis are adept at doing this on your own. Either way, claim this identity as a shapeshifter, as an alchemist, because this is your strength, Gemini. This is your strength in being able to co-create anything you want in your life. You are unstoppable. Don't let fears get in your way. Feel the fears. Look at the fears, release the fears, and go forth. <laughs> okay, happy new moon in Scorpio, Gemini. Okay, Cancers. Hello, beautiful Cancers. This new moon uh, solar eclipse in Scorpio is happening in your fifth house, your fifth house of true love and romance, of creativity and children. This is the house of fun. This is fun. I'm going to say it again cancer fun because I think a lot of us cancers, me having cancer moon, uh, moon and rising, we have not had enough fun. That's what I'm going to say. Even though I just got back from Puerto Vallarta and I was there for 10 days, it was kind of a mission for me. I was doing a mission that I'll tell you about sometime in the future. So, and I worked through part of it. So it was not complete, like total fun. I have to say it was amazing. That was amazing. But all I'm saying is it's time for cancers to have a little fun. Okay, or a lot of fun. Your message from spirit is that it's important for you to recognize your inner child. And if you have fears coming up about something that you want to do, then it's really important to be aware, <laughs> to work with those fears, to do the shadow work on those fears. Cancer, take care of yourself. There's a need to feel safe. There's a need to feel secure. There's a need to be very in touch with the needs of our inner child and make sure that our inner child feels safe. All sides of you need a voice. All the different voices. We have a whole committee of selves within us, right? They all need a voice in whatever it is we want to embark on next. And that helps us to heal and integrate our, the different sides of ourselves that have different needs and ideas and plans and that they all want to weigh in. They all want to weigh in. I do a, a process called voice dialogue with my clients when appropriate. And this would be an appropriate time to do something like voice dialogue where you're able to give every part of you a voice. Helps you to get centered and really get clear on what it is that you want and what's the right step for you. So give airtime to all of the parts of you and also to the seed of passionate drive within you, passionate desire within you. Make sure you're giving airtime to your passion as well, Cancer, as well as looking at the specifics, the realities, the practicalities. You're very good at looking at all of that stuff, but give some airtime to the possibilities too and to the magic that you want to create and to the joy and the excitement of what could be coming forth for you. And I'm going to pull a card for you now. Cancer. Cancer. Your card is guardian angel. You are not alone. Cancer, don't you love this? You are not alone. If you see feathers, that is your guardian angel talking to you saying, I am here for you. Stop thinking that life, you're doing your life on your own. You are an initiator. You're a cardinal sign. You go for it. You make things happen. You are, it's easy, very easy for those of us with strong cancer energy to feel like we're doing it all alone, but you're not. And here's a very, very clear sign from your guardian angel saying, I'm with you. Call on me. Let me put my arms around you. Let me embrace you. Let me show you that you're not alone and you're not doing this alone. I'm going to be with you. You're protected. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. Stay aligned with me and all will be well. Okay, beautiful Cancer. Happy new moon, solar eclipse in Scorpio. Okay, Leos. Hello, beautiful Leo. This solar eclipse in Scorpio is happening in your fourth house. Your fourth house of home, family, inner stability. You're looking for inner stability. You're looking for security and safety right now, Leos. Um, in the fourth house, we often have 
conditioning, past conditioning come up, fears come up, childhood fears. The fourth house is the IC, it's the bottom of the chart. And I think of IC as inner child because it reminds me to take care of my inner child when I have a fourth house transit. And in the when, when the moon and the sun get together in the fourth house, we think of things like, what do I want my family to feel like? What do I, what feels like family? What feels like home to me? How can I create a home for myself that's really like a sanctuary? Do I wanna live in the same place? Same place? Do I wanna move? Some of you could be moving. Some of you could be changing up your home. Some of you could be adding a family member. Some of you could be separating from your family. There's a lot of different things that could be happening, endings and new beginnings here during this eclipse. When I tuned into your energy, I felt um, a kind of a seriousness from some of you, kind of a sober, like I'm looking at what's real right now, what's real in my life, and it felt very sober. Um, and then the strong need to feel, to access a sense of safety and security. You might wanna check out my inner child video. I have a video on comforting your inner child, on inner child healing. That might be something that's helpful for some of you. Let yourself have the time that you need to go within, to feel your roots, to feel your re roots deep down into the center of the earth. Some, some work on the root chakra might be really helpful right now. There are a lot of um, YouTube meditations on strengthening and clearing the root chakra. And let's see what other messages might be coming up for you, beautiful Leo. Some of you might wanna build a new house or redecorate or you know, you're expanding your family. So it can be a lot of different things in this area. Let's see what the cards have to say for you, beautiful Leo. Your card is, ooh, this is so pretty. Air guardian, the guardian of air. Look how beautiful she is. Oh my goodness. The guardian of air. This is such an ethereal card. There's such an ethereal nature to this. And it says shift your perceptions. This is all about perception. This wants you to perceive your life in a new way, Leo. This wants you to see from a new vantage point. Fly above your life and see your life from a new trajectory. If you were to start your life brand new, Right now, you don't have a past. If you were to imagine that I don't have a past, I'm starting fresh. How would you create your life going forward? Drop your burdens, release your grievances, let yourself start over, see your life from the perspective of a different view. Fly above your life, even go out into space and see the planet Earth and see a little speck on the planet Earth that is you and say, or go to a star, imagine yourself on a star and look down on your life and say, how do I wanna create my life going forward? This is the first day of the rest of your life. You have your whole life ahead of you. I don't care what age you are. We're all starting fresh. We're all starting new. We all have the same, this, regardless of our limitations, regardless of our bank accounts, regardless of our um, past and our present circumstances, we all have the same potential to create something new with the air guardian. Let the air guardian, ask the air guardian for inspiration. Happy solar eclipse, beautiful Leo. And leave me a comment. Let me know if that resonates for you. I would love to know. Okay, Virgo, beautiful Virgos, this Solar eclipse in Scorpio is happening in your third house, your third house of neighbors, neighborhoods, siblings, your immediate environment, communication, your perceptions. This is also things like journaling. It's our written communication and our verbal communication. When I tuned into you, Virgo, the first thing I got was it would be really helpful to you to forgive yourself and or others for something that might be weighing on you. There's something, there's an ending that needs to happen. There's an old outworn energy or something that happened in your past that it's time for you to forgive yourself for. And then that will be very freeing to you. That will be very freeing to you. The, when, the other thing I got from tuning into your energy was I felt a lot of busyness, which is very natural during a third house transit, a, a third house new moon. 
were really busy attending to practical matters. I felt you like organizing, arranging, some of you clutter clearing, some of you setting new things up, some of you could be moving, you could be in a new home or a new office or a new job. Um, but I also felt that some of you are moving on to something new and that felt very empowered to me. So I feel kind of this mix of like inner, a little bit of inner work, a little bit of forgiveness. So you can move on, you can let go, you can close that door. You're definitely closing a door, but also you're busy. <laughs> you're busy creating and doing practical things in your world right now too, I felt. So, okay, let's see what the cards have to say for you. Beautiful Virgos. I got the sense of like, I'm just on the surface of life right now. Like I'm busy, my, my plate is full, I've got a lot to do. I'm not, I'm not doing any deep diving for the Scorpio. Even though Scorpio energy is about the deep dive and about the like, go down and do the detective work and uh, you know, go through the muck and un get rid of the weeds. Like you're like busy, too busy. I don't know, that's just for some of you. It's not all of you. Um, okay, this is an interesting card and I need to look at it with my glasses first real quick. Um, this is like an old sage person within all of us is a sage, male or female, and his name is David. And it says, hold the space, hold the space. And what he's holding looks like there's an eagle, an eagle sitting on his stick. So I feel like this is saying, hold space for your future vision for yourself, for other people. Be the one who rises to the occasion, the one who takes the high road, and the one who is like the wise person, because you are a Virgo, you're a healer, you have an immense wisdom, you have traveled many roads during your lifetime and other lifetimes for many of you, and acknowledge the sage within you, acknowledge the wisdom, acknowledge how experienced you are and how far you've come and be compassionate with yourself and with others and hold space for the highest good for your life and for others. Okay, happy new moon, solar eclipse and Scorpio. Okay, Libras, beautiful Libras, hello. And happy birthday to those of you Libras who have your sun in the later degrees of Libra. Some of you have your birthdays to come, so happy birthday. Now this new moon, solar eclipse in Scorpio, is happening in your second house, your second house of money. It's earned income, it's self-worth, it's values, it's soul esteem, self-esteem. This is you getting very clear on what your values are now. What are you creating going forward? This could be a new job for you. This could be a shift in your job. This could be a promotion. It's a death of a, a lower self, so to speak, an old self, uh, uh, an old, e it's an ego death. It just is. It's, it's a money house. Um, it's, it is a rebirth for you and I feel tuning into your energy I felt a clear resolve a clear resolve to make changes that will increase your sense of self-esteem that will increase your sense of uh, of deserving and of worthiness and I felt a real strong sense of I am tired of giving away my energy and not getting it back and I deserve better. Like, you know what you deserve, Libras. And I feel like many of you are ready, have been maybe like stalling a little bit and making changes and have maybe been just too afraid to, to I, I was talking with a really good Libra friend the other day and he was saying how he hates conflict and he just avoids conflict. And, but he doesn't just avoid conflict like he avoids any potential conflict even where they may not be conflict and he said he's done with that he's absolutely done with that he is ready to now have his own back and he knows what he deserves and he's saying no to all he's it's like becoming very clear you may have a very something very illuminated for you We're like oh my god not this again boundaries I'm ready to set clear boundaries I'm I see it now. Like You see it now. You see very clearly what you need to do, Libra. This is what I see for you. And I'm going to pull a card for you now. Libras. Libra, your card is... Ooh, I love it because it's the Scorpio new moon eclipse and it's very witchy. Scorpio, and you got the white witch. The white witch. Be the light. Be the light. Oh my gosh, she is so gorgeous. She's so ethereal. She's got this owl with her. 
I feel like this owl has antlers. Is that just me or does it really? Leave me a comment, let me know. I'm looking at this and I feel like there's antlers on this owl. And th this is like the combination of the owl's wisdom. The owl sees all, the owl is like omnipotent, omniscient. And then the antlers are the fierceness, the strength of the, of, you know, a deer, like the, the strength, the ability to like protect yourself and create for yourself and, and the ability to be self-reliant. And the message is be the light. There's a purity about you. There's a, um, there's a, there's a new fierceness about you, Libra. You see it, you feel it, you know it. Be the white witch. The white witch is, lets her purity, his purity shine through and make the decisions that are for the highest good of all. Okay, my beautiful friends, so those are the 12 sign readings. If you would like a personal astrology reading, a personal astrology consultation, where we look at your gifts, your talents, your strengths, your mojo, your magic, the alchemy, the, the uniqueness and life purpose that you came to this incarnation to express. And I also look with you at the transits, the current transits that are happening in your life. How are they empowering you? How are they challenging you? How you can meet those challenges as well as the future upcoming transits and how those can empower you as well and give you a little bit of extra light and excitement going forward to look at what's coming up for you. Go to my website, check out my astrology readings. We can do a heart's desire reading. We can do a natal chart reading or we can do a life purpose reading. And all of the readings, I will look into the current transits as well as the future transits for you. For those of you who want to do a deeper dive in coaching, you want support going forward on a vision for your life, you wanna work with me on a more ongoing basis, look at my Soul Alchemy Coaching, where I support you as your believing mirror, as your confidant to help you Bring to fruition something that is very important to you in your life to really help give you the support that you need to make a real powerful transformation in your life. And we can also do a clarity session, a clarity coaching session, which is a one-off session where I support you in whatever is up for you right now. And you can book your astrology consultation or clarity session directly on my website. Thank you for your time, presence, and energy during this video. Thank you for giving this video a thumbs up, for clicking like, for sharing my video with others. Thank you to those of you who have subscribed. It's great for you because you get my video as soon as it's uploaded, especially if you tap the notification bell. You will get notified when I upload. Your subscribes also really help my channel, and it helps us to be a beautiful like-minded community. So if you would like my free gift, my friend, I have a free gift for you, and that is a guided meditation, reconnecting to your spirit, a soothing guided meditation to help you reconnect with your spirit, reconnect with your spirit guides during and what your heart desires most during this solar eclipse in Scorpio. Simply go to my website, sign up for my inspirational updates on my homepage, and you will get an instant download of the guided meditation reconnecting to your spirit. And until my next video, my friend, I am sending you all my love. Happy new moon, solar eclipse in Scorpio.